Hi, welcome to my ECG video blog. I'm Ken Grauer, and this is the first installment of this new feature that I'll be adding to my ECG blog. For your convenience, I've added a few direct links that may be useful. These links are active, so you can click on them at any time to check out their destination. They include my ECG blog, where these audio installments may be found, my website, and the author page where my material is listed. Above all is my email address. Feel free to write me with your comments, feedback, and questions. On to today's case. Here's the rhythm, but there is no history. How would you interpret this rhythm strip? Additional questions to consider are the following. Is there AV block or something else? For example, sick sinus or non-conducted PACs. How can we tell if there is AV block? And if there is block, what type of AV block is present? Before going further, what is missing from this tracing? The answer is that we simply don't know which leads are being monitored. It turns out that the leads being monitored on this simultaneously recorded two lead rhythm strip are lead three and lead V1. That said, why do we care what leads are being used? The answer is simply that we get lots of information from knowing the electrical viewpoint of our observations. Some leads are better for picking up P waves. Others are better for looking at the QRS. Ideally, we'll have more than a single lead because things occurring at the same instant in time will often look somewhat different from another electrical perspective. So in this case, we might ask if lead 3 and lead V1 are the best leads to use. Lead 3 isn't my favorite. It's an inferior lead, but in general not nearly as good as another inferior lead, lead 2, for picking up P waves. So my preference, if I only had one lead, would be to start with a lead 2, since this is usually the best lead for picking up P waves. I'll emphasize usually because lead two is not always the best lead for P waves. There are times, as for atrial flutter, when lead three may actually be better. When I'm able to get two leads, I like to add a right-sided lead, either lead V1 from standard ECG or monitoring lead MCL1, which provides a similar view to what you see in lead V1. In general, lead V1 or MCL1 is the second best lead for picking up P waves after lead two. In addition, V1 or MCL1 provides the best view for right-sided morphology, which is important in assessing the typical right bundle branch block pattern of aberrant conduction. Finally, in the optimal situation of having access to three leads for monitoring, my preference is to add a left-sided lead, such as V6 or MCL6, to lead 2 and lead MCL1. At this point, we might ask a more fundamental question, which is, is there atrial activity in the form of P waves? To answer this question, I always start with what I know, 
I know there is a P wave preceding the QRS that terminates the pause toward the end of the tracing. This is marked by the red arrow. It also looks like there is a P wave preceding the last beat on this tracing, as suggested by the blue arrow. So there is at least some atrial activity. Having said that, if all we had was a single monitoring lead, I would not be certain whether additional P waves are present. The amplitude of atrial activity is quite small in this tracing, and I'm just not certain if there is or is not atrial activity during the early part of this tracing. Fortunately, we have two simultaneously recorded leads. Let's use them. The key is to first determine what the normal ST-T wave looks like. To do this, we find the most normal beat we can, as suggested by the red arrow. Look at the ST-T wave of this most normal looking beat to see what a normal ST-T wave should look like. Note that this normal ST-T wave looks relatively flat, as suggested by the red circle. Now carefully compare this normal ST-T wave to the other ST-T waves on the tracing. Is there a difference? Note you are looking for small and often quite subtle differences in ST-T wave morphology that are not due to baseline movement or artifact. Look at the blue arrow. Compare the small but real negative notch it points to with the normal ST segment. Is there a difference? So, you are looking for subtle but real differences in the ST-T wave that indicate atrial activity, but which are not due to baseline wander or artifact. Determining whether any differences seen are real and not the result of artifact is not always an easy task. I always suggest numbering the beats when any complex rhythm strip that you wish to discuss. This is easy to do, and is really the only way to be sure we are all talking about the same thing. We said that beat number 10 is a normal beat, red arrow. Note that this normal ST-T wave looks relatively flat, as suggested by the red circle. In contrast, the ST-T wave of beat number 9 has a small negative notch, blue arrow. Now look at the other ST-T waves in lead 3. The reason I think this is real is that the ST-T waves of beats number one through eight in lead three all seem to vary in a way that suggests they are hiding atrial activity, as per the green circles. Now make the same comparison in lead V1. The T wave of beat number 10 in lead V1 is again flat. The ST-T wave of virtually all the other beats in this bottom tracing manifest a small negative notch with slight variation in the timing of this notch. We suspect that there are lots of P waves on this tracing. These then are the P waves. It makes perfect sense that these are the P waves since the atrial rhythm is perfectly regular. Note 
that the P to P interval from one P wave to the next in this tracing is constant throughout. Hint, when there is time to do so, using calipers facilitates interpretation of any complex rhythm strip. There is no better or faster way to determine relationships between P waves and the QRS. There is also no better and faster way to determine if the rhythm is regular. Measure the P2P interval, ideally doing so with calipers. Note that the P2P interval is constant for all beats on this tracing. This confirms that the atrial rhythm is regular. One of the key points to remember about the ECG diagnosis of AV block is that the atrial rate should be regular, or at least fairly regular. There may be slight variation in the atrial rate due to underlying sinus arrhythmia or ventriculophasic sinus arrhythmia, but by and large with AV block, there will be a regular atrial rate. When there are pauses, but the atrial rate is not regular, then I think about things like PACs or blocked PACs and or the sinus pauses or exit block common with sick sinus syndrome. Let's put it all together and interpret this rhythm strip. As we do with any cardiac rhythm, once we ensure that the patient is stable, we remember to watch our P's and Q's and the three R's. The five parameters to always assess in whatever sequence is most convenient for the rhythm at hand are presence of P waves, QRS width, and the three R's, which are rate, regularity of the rhythm, and the relation, if there is one, of any P waves present to neighboring QRS complexes. The atrial rate is regular at about 70 per minute, red arrows. There is a brief pause in the ventricular rhythm between beats number 9 and number 10. The QRS complex is narrow, clearly not more than half a large box. Note that a P wave precedes each QRS complex on the tracing albeit with a prolonged PR interval. One P wave is not conducted, green arrow. The PR interval prolongs before the dropped beat. Note that this isn't obvious if we go from beat to beat because the difference in PR interval is small. But if you look at the PR interval just before the pause, prior to beat number nine, and compare it with the PR interval just after the pause, before beat number 10, it becomes obvious that the PR interval has lengthened until the drop beat occurs. After the drop beat, conduction resumes with a normal PR interval for beat number 10. Then we see the PR interval lengthen a little bit more before beat number 11 compared to the PR interval for beat number 10. In conclusion, this is not an easy tracing to interpret. We use the same P's, Q's, and 3R approach as for any other rhythm. The atrial rhythm is regular but a beat is dropped. There is therefore some form of AV block. We know that the slight pause is not due to a blocked PAC or a sinus pause because the atrial rhythm is regular. The pearl from today is to be aware that with long wanky box cycles, you may not see any obvious difference in PR interval from one beat to the next. So we look at the PR interval right before the pause and right after the pause. Doing so makes it obvious that this rhythm is second degree AV block type one, which is a synonym for AV wanky block. We hope you have enjoyed this case. Your feedback, 
comments and questions are welcome. This is Ken Grauer signing off.